homologous series to which compound B belongs to. So let's go to our compound B and see what is happening. It will be easy to see that compound B is an ester because of this functional group that we have here. Compound B is an ester. So the answer to 2.1.1 that compound B is an ester. And then the second question 2.1.2 we're looking for the IUP name of the same compound. So this is how you actually name an ester ladies and gentlemen. You're gonna come here to the structure and you're gonna put a line that divides the oxygen with the double bond from the oxygen with the single bond. And then the part of the structure that has the oxygen with the single bond is coming from the alcohol. And the part of the structure that has the oxygen with a double bond is coming from the acid. Because we know that in order to form an ester, you need an alcohol and an acid in the presence of H2SO4. So let's look at our alcohol. Our alcohol that was used in making this ester is methanol. Why are we saying it is methanol? Because of this single carbon right here. And the acid that was used to make this ester is propanoic acid. Why are we saying so? These three carbons that we have there. So when we name this ester, the name is going to be methyl propanoid. Methyl propanoid. Right. So this methyl here is coming from the fact that the alcohol that was used is methanol. If the alcohol that was used was butanol, then the name would start by saying butyl. And then the propanoid is coming from the acid that was used, propanoic acid. Let's move to the second equation, uh, 2.2 and 2.2.1. An alcohol and an acid are heated in the presence of concentrated sulfuric acid to form compound B. Write down the rule of the concentrated sulfuric acid in this reaction. So sulfuric acid in an esterification acts as a catalyst. So the answer to 2.2.1 is catalyst. It acts as a catalyst. It speeds up the reaction. You can also see that. And then the answer to 2.2.2, names of the alcohol and the organic acid used to prepare compound B. So we have already deduced which alcohol was used and which acid was used when we were naming our compound B, right? So now we're just going to see uh, the alcohol that was used is methanol and the acid that was used is propanoic acid. The acid that was used is propanoic acid. 2.2.3 uh, name of the type of reaction that is taking place. Obviously the name of the reaction that is taking place is esterification esterification and other books will say condensation which is also correct i see that option time after time in memos uh, that is 2.2 uh, let's move to 2.3 so in 2.3 from the table above, consider compound C. So let's go to compound C and see what I have. Compound C, we have an acid. This is the functional group of an acid. Ethanoic acid to be specific. Let's go to the equations 2.3.1. So the first question, 2.3.1, write down the name of the functional group of compound C. So we've already deduced that compound C is an acid, right? The name of the functional group of acids is carboxyl. So we have carboxyl group. That is the name of the functional group. And then 2.3.2, to which homologous group does compound C belong to? It is a carboxylic acid. That's an easy equation to answer. It is a carboxylic acid. 2.3.3, differentiate between the terms functional group and homologous series. This question is actually just asking you to define homologous series and functional group. So let me just remind you, homologous series is a series of organic compounds that can be described by the same general formula. 
a series of organic compounds that can be described by the same general formula. While functional group, on the other hand, is a bond or an atom or a group of atoms that determines the physical and chemical properties of a group of organic compounds. There we go. You just need to define functional group and homologous series for 2.3.3. 2.4 for the table above um from the table above actually consider compounds a d and f and then the first question write down the homologous series to which they belong to you so let's go to compound a compound a we have an oh which is the functional group of an alcohol so we know that compound a is an alcohol and then compound g we also have another OH, so that is another alcohol. Let's look at compound F. It ends with all, so we have another alcohol again. So A, D, and F are alcohols uh, as far as the homologous series is concerned. So the answer to 2.4.1 will be alcohols because A, D, and F are all alcohols. 2.4.2, compound A and D are isomers. As what type of isomer will they be classified? So let's go to A and D, A and D. So A, let me just write down A real quick for the sake of clarity. So for A, we have something like this. We have hydrogens everywhere else, everywhere else. And then let's look at, let's look at D. Let's look at D. So for D, we have a condensed structural formula, uh, which we're going to write in full now. So we have a carbon with three hydrogens. We have the second carbon. And then on the second carbon, we have one hydrogen and an OH. And then the third carbon with three hydrogens. So what type of isomers is compound A and D, not B, excuse me, compound A and D. So compound A, the OH is on the first carbon. And then for compound D, the OH is on the second carbon. So they have the same molecular formula, but just different position of the functional group. So those are called positional isomers. So 2.4.2, the answer here is uh, positional isomers. Uh, they will be known or referred to as positional isomers, compound A and D. Uh, the third question, 2.4.3, uh, we asked to draw the structure of compound F. Let's go ahead and look at compound F. So for compound F, 2 methyl propane 2 on. So we, let's start with the prop. So as soon as we see prop, we know that we need three carbons. So we have one, two, three, and then two all. This two all tells us that the OH is on the second carbon. So let's have that OH right here. And then this two methyl, we have a branch on the second carbon. So we're going to have one carbon there. And then now we just left out with the hydrogens. And we have the structural formula of compound F just like that. Let's go ahead and move to 2.5. 2.5. So 2.5, we are interested in compound g and compound e 2.5.1 we're supposed to name compound g let's go to compound g so compound g uh, the first thing that we must look for is the longest carbon chain it is easy to see that this will indeed be our longest carbon chain let's count that one two three four five six that is hex that is hex and then as soon as i see br I know that it is a halo alkane, right? So it will be hexane. It will be hexane. Now I'm just left with the branches. Where do I start numbering? If you start numbering from the left, if you start numbering from the left, on the second carbon, you have BR, you have bromo. And then if you start numbering from the right, on the second carbon, you have methyl, you have dimethyl, right? 
So the question now is what takes preference between a branch and a halogen? Well, according to the exam guideline, nothing takes preference between the halogen and the branch. You just have to start a numbering from the side that will lead to the smallest number. What do I mean by that? If we start numbering from the left, then we're going to have two for brom, right? And then this is two, three, four, five. And then we're going to have five comma five for that dimethyl. And then these numbers will give us 12. If we start numbering from the right, we're going to have 2.82 for the dimethyl, right? And then we're gonna have five for the bromo. So this is two plus two plus five, which is equals to nine. If we start numbering from the right, we have the smallest number and that's what we need to do. Nothing is gonna take preference between the halogen and the branch. So we're gonna have five bromo, we're gonna have five bromo dash 2.2 .2 dimethylhexane 2.2 hexane dimethylhexane and that is the name of our compound G the last question structural formula of compound E let's go ahead and look at compound E so compound E we have 2.4 dimethyl pent one in so pent five carbons one two three four five and then we have a double bond on the first carbon we can tell from this pent one in so there we go we have a double bond and then on the second carbon we have a branch with one carbon and then on the fourth carbon we also have another branch with one carbon so now we're essentially done we just left with filling out the hydrogens so let's go ahead and do that yeah so one two three we still need another hydrogen and then one two three it's a painful exercise but yeah we have to do what we have to do